So this is video number one in chapter five. It's on rates and ratios. Um, it goes with the first section. You can see the pages there. Make sure you actually copy these down on your paper. There are two targets. So we're going to find rates and ratios. Make sure that we can simplify them um, and add the proper labels or units that go on them and also then be able to divide those rates and find what we call a unit rate. And once we have unit rates, then we can compare those to pick the best option. So to pick the better price, to pick who's faster, to pick um, whatever the better option is between two different unit rates. So there's some vocab in this section. The first one is equivalent, probably a word you've seen before, but make sure you copy it down. Equivalent just means equal value, same amount. Uh, if we're talking about equivalent fractions, they would simplify to the same thing. So equivalent, equal value. Simplify or reduced or to get something in lowest terms. We talked about this a lot when we did fractions too. So that means to reduce or simplify something, Okay, sorry. So if you're trying to reduce or simplify something, you're going to divide by the common factor. Um, we would say divide by the GCF, the greatest common factor, and then get smaller numbers. So that's how we reduce fractions or ratios. When we reduced fractions before, now we're going to do it the same way with ratios. It works the same way. You're just trying to get it written in smaller numbers that are easier to use. And ratio. So a ratio is a comparison of two quantities using division. A lot of times it is written just like a fraction. So I could say the ratio of 3 to 4 and write it just like 3 fourths, but it means comparing 3 to 4. We also use a colon, and this would be the ratio of 3 to 4. We say the word 2 there. So here's an example. Uh, 12 dogs and 15 cats. Find the ratio of cats to dogs. Well, whatever order they list it in, that's the order I need to put the numbers in. So, looks like 15 cats and 12 dogs. So there's my ratio, but any time we write a ratio, just like with fractions, I should simplify or reduce it. So think of what goes into 15 and 12. You'd say, hmm, I think 3 goes into both of them. So divide them both by 3, and 15 divided by 3, and 12 divided by 3. That would be my simplified ratio of cats to dogs. 5 to 3. So we'll keep going with the uh, vocab. A rate. Well, a rate is a ratio of two quantities that have different units. So I could give these different examples. The rate of how fast you're driving is miles and hours, 60 miles and two hours. Or dollars and hours, $32 and three hours. That's a rate of how much money you make or $16 for four sandwiches. That's the rate or the cost of the sandwiches. So a rate is just comparing two quantities that have different units. Per, number five. Per is a word that you're going to use a ton in this chapter. Per means for each one. So miles per gallon. How many miles for each gallon? Or I don't know if I have, yep. Um, dollars per hour, how much money do you get for each hour that you work? Or um, how many sandwiches per person? Or um, we can come up with tons of different rates that use per. When you see per, it tells you to divide. Put this in big letters, circle, star, underline it. Per means to divide them. So when we have a rate and we see per, you're going to be dividing. Okay, number six, a unit. A unit is usually just a label on your answer. So miles, seconds, hours, degrees, points, girls, boys, students, teachers, cats, dogs, anything that I use to label my answer. But it has another meaning, and that's part of the seventh vocab word. We also in this chapter talk about a unit rate. And a unit rate is a little bit different. That means to actually divide your rate and get a denominator of one. So again, this is the important word. To get a unit rate, you need to divide them. Um, it's going to end up being a denominator of one just because 
that's what you get when you divide them. So I'll, I'll give you some examples. From above, if you can see up here, we had 60 miles in two hours. Well, 60 miles in two hours, if I actually divide them, comes out to 30 miles per hour, right? Here's my denominator of one. I could also just write this as 30 miles per hour. We say per when you read this slash. Or sandwiches per person. Let's say I had 12 sandwiches and four people. Well, if I actually divide those, 12 divided by four, I'd get three sandwiches per person. I divided it to find out how many sandwiches for one person, each person. Or miles per gallon. How many miles can I go on each gallon of gas? So how many miles for one gallon of gas that I have in my tank? Okay, so we're going to do a lot in this section finding unit rates. So here's some examples of rates, right? You could have a rate of how fast you can run. Your running rate in a 100 meter dash. Well, we're going to match it with the rate that you see here. Which one would match up with a running rate? Well, it's not going to be dollars, it's not going to be inches, meters per second. Yeah, a rate for how fast I could run might be meters per second. How far do you get each second? And that matches up here, meters per second. Maybe you can run 10 meters in a second. Or the next one, fertilization for the apple orchard. So Miss Rowe at Spicer's, how much um, fertil fertilizer does she use? Well, she could measure that in pounds per acre of land. So maybe she spreads uh, 50 pounds of fertilizer each acre of land she has. And average pay rate for a professional athlete. Well, they get paid in dollars per year. How much, how much um, money they make each year. So that might be, let's see, that's this one. Maybe they make $200,000 per year or more, depending on who you are. And the last one, average rainfall in a rainforest. Well, that could be measured in inches per year, right? That's a rate. Maybe they get, um, I don't know how much rain they get in the rainforest. Let's say 67 inches per year, okay? So uh, these are examples of rates. Okay, so some common unit rates. These are ones that you use all the time. When mom or dad are driving down the road, maybe you've seen signs that tell you the speed limit or how fast you're going in the speedometer. So speed of a car, you might measure that in miles per hour, right? How fast you're going, how far you can get and how long it takes you. How much gas a car uses. This is in a lot of commercials. A lot of people, if you wanna save gas, you care about the miles per gallon that your car gets. How far can you go on a gallon of gas? Or typing speed, if you're in computer class, maybe you've figured out your words, and I think they even abbreviate it this way, words per minute. So sometimes we say per, sometimes we draw a slash, or sometimes you just put a P. Um, like the, for this first one, miles per hour, a lot of people just say MPH or MPG. So you could write it both ways. How crowded is a city or a state? This is a social studies vocab, right? Have you heard of um, population density? How many people per square mile, maybe? How many people are in each square mile? Speed that an engine turns. If you work on any kind of motor, you know RPM, rotations per minute. How fast is the engine spinning? And then how fast you can read, maybe words per minute or pages per minute. So um, get used to the word per showing up in all of these rates. And remember that anytime you see this slash, we say per. So let's give the rates. 125 fishermen and five fishing boats. This is on your paper. I could give the rate of 125 fishermen uh, in five boats. But I could also give the rate of five boats for 125 fishermen. So a lot of times you get the choice of which way you set up the rate, what goes on top and what goes on the bottom. But sometimes one of those will make more sense. Okay, let's turn those into unit rates and see what we get.
We said to find a unit rate, I actually have to divide them. So when I do 125 divided by 5, I get 25, and I need to keep this label, fisherman per boat. So there are 25 people on each boat. That's a reasonable unit rate. And when I divide this one, uh, 5 divided by 125, I get this. 0 0.04 boats per fisherman. Because I take the label just like I see here, boats per fisherman. And that's what I brought down. So does saying that you get 0 0.04 boats per fisherman make much sense? Not really. Probably this one is the one you would use to describe how many fishermen on each boat. Okay, so this says find both unit rates. That means set up both rates and actually divide them. See what you get. So I could do miles per gallon. That would be my first one. So 240 miles and 11 gallons. And if I actually divide those, so get your calculator. 21.818. And then I keep miles per gallon as my label, MPG. So that's my first unit rate. Let's do the other one. The other one would be if I do gallons divided by miles. Well, 11 gallons and 240 miles. Divide those, so get your calculator, 11 divided by 240, 0 0.0458. 0 0.046 gallons, I can just move this down as my label, gallons per mile. So this means that your car can drive 21 miles on each gallon, or you could say that it uses 0 0.046 gallons to go a mile. One of these we use a whole lot more often, it probably makes more sense to people. That's something we use every day. This one, not so much. I could find it, but it's probably not one that makes a lot of sense. So you try the next one. Calories, slices of pizza. Find both rates, and then we'll come back and check. Okay, so I set them both up. I started with calories per slice, calories divided by slices, and I got this. You're not done until you put a label on it. This is 350 calories per slice. That makes sense. We would probably use that, talking about how many calories in each slice of pizza. The other way, if I do slices per calorie, eight slices divided by 2,800 calories, I get this. So I can eat that much of a slice for each calorie. Probably not gonna use this one. Nobody says I just ate 0.0028 of a slice of pizza, but we could find it. So here I'm giving you one, two, three, four, five, six, five different rates. Tell me which one would make more sense. So for example, miles per gallon, or do you think it would make more sense to say gallons per mile? I would say we always talk about how many miles can I go on each gallon of gas. That unit rate makes more sense. Try these, write down the way that you think makes more sense, and then we'll come back and check. So I've written them all out. Let's see which one makes sense. How many donuts per person or how many people per donut? Mm, probably that one. How much money do I make each hour or how long, how much time do I have to work to earn one dollar? Probably that one. Uh, miles per hour, that's one we use every day. We don't usually talk about how many hours it takes us to drive one mile. That would be silly. And then how many runs per inning. Okay. We're out of, uh, almost out of time on this video, but I do want you to try these five as practice. So find the unit rates. Think about which way to set it up that makes more sense and actually divide them and then find the answers. So pause and then we'll come back and um, check them together. So I've written down the rates that I would set up and find. Make sure every single thing is labeled. Anytime you write down your rates, everything gets a label. Okay. So um, dollars per week, I get, that's not helping, I get $450 per week. Number two, I get 27 students in each classroom and five jokes per day. 
Make sure you have labels on all your answers. Point four books read each week. And then the last one.